Welcome to Our Voices on the Yard, where Black artistic excellence meets everyday life. I'm your host, Denise Woods. Join me as we explore and celebrate the achievements of the Black artists that attended conservatories and fine arts programs from around the world, starting with my alma mater, the Juilliard School. Hi, this is Denise Woods, and welcome back to Our Voices on the Yard. This is part two of the Stephen Herring interview. Stephen has been amazing. I hope you've enjoyed him because he has so much more to share. And those of you who are figuring out how to negotiate being an artist with making a living, or not even being an artist, but if you have a, a, a profession that you absolutely love and something else on the side, be inspired by this gentleman who does it both because you really can have it all. Check out Stephen. I, I've shared this with you too, and I, I will share it for uh, your listeners in the audience. Um, I don't think that I was able to really take advantage of the voice program at Juilliard as, uh, as other students were. Um, I spent two years with Ed Zambara, um, and then two years with Stephen Smith, and then a summer with Marlena Mollis. Mm -hmm. um, I love Marlena. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So I, I don't think I, because it was broken up, I did not get the full four year with one teacher, which for me is important. I need the consistency of, of having um, one teacher to really hone in on what it is that I need to learn. And then it's the trajectory. I need that. Um, and I, did, I wasn't able to get that. So I don't think I got the, the best of the voice program. Or sort of say the voice lessons that I could have gotten. Of well, course, you get tools. Well, Steve, my question is, were there other singers who had the luxury of having one teacher the entire time? Yes, there were others. And actually, had I gone with the teacher that I was assigned to when I got to Juilliard, I would have had that experience. Ah. Um, uh, but I didn't. I, I wanted to work with a male teacher. I was assigned to a female teacher. Um, yeah. And so the male teacher was Mr. Zambara. And I, I knew of other baritones who had had success with him. Uh, mm -hmm. But they had the four year experience and in some time in some terms is sometimes a six year experience if they got their masters, you know. Wow. Um so I, I didn't have that. I didn't have that. Uh but of course, like I said, you you're always you're always getting information and you're always getting the tools. And one thing Mr. Zambara said that I again, I always another aha moment. Mm -hmm. Um he said, son, we learn from everyone. So always remain open and get the, the stuff that you need. Um, which mm -hmm. was wild and like, oh my God, yes. Those, that's something else that I remember. And I tell students that I work with, you learn from everybody. So, Absolutely. I, I yeah. can't imagine having one acting teacher in the drama division uh, I can unequivocally really? say that if I had had my first year acting teacher all four years at Juilliard, I never would have lasted at Juilliard. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was so wow. wonderful to have these varied, mm -hmm. varied personalities, ways mm -hmm. of teaching. The pedagogy was different. The experience mm -hmm. was different. And so, um, and, and we talked about this. Um, yeah. Marion Seldy, who was my fourth year yeah. acting teacher. And, and I think to, I, I think she taught in the dance division. Did she teach you guys? Did Marion Seldes teach in the opera? No. She taught the dancers. No. But we were just I wish she had. Oh my at the bit to get to Marion. And Michael Kahn, my third year acting teacher. I can't even imagine staying with yeah. one teacher and having missed out on those experiences that I would have yeah. gotten in my later years, in the in the latter yeah. years of of the Juilliard training. Um so yeah. and I know with singing it's different. I know with 
with um, developing that operatic muscle. Right. It's very right. different, and, right. and to stay yeah. consistent with with one teacher, because I know the, the the musician that I spoke with, the wonderful Richard Alston, uh, who <sighs> was at Juilliard when I was there. Uh, and, and he is yeah. a guest on the show as well. Yeah. Yeah, listen, I love him. I don't, you love him. He had the same piano teacher the entire six years. Yes. Plus he got his master's yes. degree. So yeah. I understand yeah. that, that, you know, for, for the, what, what's required of your instrument and, and the mastery right. of that instrument. I, I, I get that. Right. So I understand right. what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Um, but there were so many other so many other wonderful teachers. Like we had fantastic coaches at Juilliard. Okay, so um, it begs the question: which, What was the difference between a yes. teacher and a coach? Great, and that's an excellent question. So the the teacher gives you the technique. The teacher works okay. on the 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 technique, the foundation, ba rare, ba bare bones, how you sing. The coach okay, so, will then. Uh, so, so really what I need you to do is, is, is unpack that for me. I yep. know what it means, but for, for yes. non-singers, what does that technique consist of? Right. So the technique will consist of breathing a low breath. Um, I always say everything from your navel down drops on the, on the inhalation. And then when yes. you're singing, it slowly comes in. And at times it's like posting. If you know, if you've ever ridden a horse, it's like, and the air is coming out. It's also the focus on the vowels. Mm. Um, and it's, it's the vowels on that clear line. And I always say the consonants are like the clothes pins that <laughs> stick on there. Um, it's, it's making sure the voice has the, what the Italians say, the chiaro scuro. It has the light and the dark. Um, mm. You know, so if my, like my voice is naturally dark, which means my, my vowels need to be brighter. Mm. So we have the chiaro scuro. How do you do That's what a, Physiologically, a, how, do you, how do you brighten up the vowel? I mean, I know it because I'm a voice coach, but I'm the yes, speaking voice yes. coach. And so I, yeah, you, yeah. Are, you are so speaking my language right now. And I, <laughs> but, but it's from a different perspective. It's from the singing yeah, voice. And so that's right. how do you bright, what do you do physiologically to brighten up that tone if in fact it requires it? So it's, it's like they're, they're 10,000 ahs, they're 10,000 e's, you know? So if it's a, an ah, if my ah is ah, 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 if I need to brighten this, ah, ah, I don't know if you heard that transition. Do I again. heard it. I heard it, but some people would ah, say, yes. some people would say it just sounded louder to me. No, it got louder, but I heard it well, coming you know from why? Yes. here to out here. Which yes. back here is is, yes. is is further back, and so when you get it further forward, it will appear right. that it's louder. But I, I it heard it. It will appear coming, that it's louder. I heard it coming from back here to right out here. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll also say, that's why I think the whole one model works for everybody in a voice studio does not work. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. each student is... An individual, and each student should sound like them. They shouldn't sound like a teacher's method. And so for me, because the voice is naturally darker, we want to sing on core. So that dark, if it's in dark, oh, that's in the back of my throat with a, nat with a, with a naturally dark voice, then everything just kind of falls back and it, gets, it has like a woolly sound. That does not really travel uh, what kind of a because sound opera singers. What uh, like has a kind a woolly, of a uh, a and, woolly, and a sound. woolly sound like muffled, like wool, 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 like, like muffled. Yes, okay. yes. But I yes. heard, uh, but I also heard like a wooden sound, like wooden. Yes, you no, know? wood. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and 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 I always and, think and that's not a bad that 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 quality is not a bad quality. No. It's not a bad quality as a color. As it's a not color. a bad quality as a color. Yes. As a technique, I don't know how healthy it is. That's why. I, I think. Yes. 
talk about it, talk right. about it, talk right. about it, talk about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Back here means it's constrained, it's constricted, it's and constrained. it's held, and it's not healthy. Right. Yeah, it's not to held. To open it and release it and let yes, it go yes, is much yes. more healthy. Yes. yes, 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 yeah. And you have many more options as a singer. <laughs> well, you can shape it. You can shape it you can when shape. it's out here. You right. can't shape right. it right. back here. You can right. shape. The you sound. can't shape it back there. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's it's all it's the baby crying. It's the baby crying who just cries. Ah, ah. That's the the rawest perfect sound. I'm not saying that that's the sound we have to sing on on the operatic stage or anywhere. But that's the sound. That's the chords coming together, supported by the breath. That's all yeah. that is. And that's yeah. what we want to get to. As singers, now my sound is going to sound very different from uh, your sound, which is going to sound very different from another singer's or, or person's sound. It should be authentic to who you are. Yeah. But that back sound is, <laughs> I don't get it. Um, so that's the technique. That, that's what the voice teacher does. The coach will then work on um, the language. The co coach will then work on the style of the music. Mm. The coach will will then say, "Could you give me a different color on this phrase?" No. Or they may say, break "What does down. this mean break to you? Down. What does this break, song mean to break, you?" Break that down. Yes. A different color. What does that mean? Yes. So it's a different color. Is if I'm and 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 you can, you can give about, me an example. Give, give me an example. Show yeah. me. Don't just yeah. tell me. <laughs> uh, if I'm singing, um, I'm trying to think of. Uh, 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 oh yeah, I'll just sing the the national uh, like America the Beautiful. Um, oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain. So there was, yeah, I was smiling, but there was also, it's hard, to, you know, to put the microphone, but there was a, there was a, the color was more of like, ah, mm -hmm. oh, he likes this. But if I didn't like it, I'm just going to give you a basic different color. Which a color is emotion. A color is emotion. That's, That's what all. I, that, okay. That, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. The so color is emotion. I'm going to add something to this. Give it a different yep. color. But now what I want you to do is put a jazz spin on it with a different color. Ah, okay. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains' majesty, above the fruited plain. Nice. Something like that. Nice. Which gives it like, yeah. it's, more of, it's more of a, uh, it's not ah right. It, it, it's I, more of a. Uh, I heard a longing. I heard a, lo yes. a longing. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Now, Those are the colors that a I want third one. one. I want a third one. Yeah. I want a gospel one. Oh. Give me gospel and up tempo. <laughs> okay. Come on now, bring in the. <laughs> <laughs> I know you went to that <laughs> classical church, darling, there in Houston. <laughs> but I didn't need you to bring in the Baptist church. <laughs> the Baptist church. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right, right. My attempt at the Baptist church. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, you to full uh, for space. That's not really gospel, is it? Um. Oh, beautiful that is. for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain. All right, come on now. Oh, yeah, hey, something. Dorothy, it's Dorothy, along those Dorothy, lines. Dorothy, I'm sorry. 
For purple mountains, majesty above the fruited plain, America, America. God shed His grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes. Yes. Amen. Oh my gosh. Amen. I love it. Now I understand what the coach does. The coach, yeah, yes. Yeah. The color, yeah. the emotion, where, you yes. know, where, you know. So so when you took that little trill, when you when you played with the note, when you bended right. the note, it has to right. come from something deep, not just because you heard so- Whitney do it. <laughs> exactly. Everybody who, ever since Whitney sang the national anthem, everybody sings the national anthem like Whitney. And Whitney did it from a place of, of, of truth. You Absolutely. know, I mean, she had, Absolutely. Whitney has that thing because she has her mother. She has all the gospel influence. That's right. But I'm like, if you're going to do that, find the, find yourself in that way of doing it then. That's amazing. You know? That's that. That's wonderful. Because that's Thank when you. people don't, can't ignore that. Why? We're drawn yeah. to it. No, I was just saying, That's people can't, drawn to. you are drawn to it. Yes. 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 Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. switch the conversation just a tad because this is another passion of yours and I would be derelict in yeah. my duty as, as the navigator of this conversation to forget it or not to mention it. And that is your mm-hmm. love for arts education. Uh, you, yes, you have a program. You're the yeah. executive di- director yes. of a program called the yes. Living Arts Collaborate Collaborative. In, in yeah. fact, the yes. executive director yeah. of Living Arts yeah. Collaborative. Is this something that you founded? Are you the founder and executive director of this? I am the founder and executive director of Living Arts Collaborative, which is an arts education organization that partners professional musicians from New York City with school districts throughout New York State for teaching artists residencies. Um, Wow. I can't speak of Living Arts Collaborative without speaking of Bridge Arts Ensemble, of which I was also um, a co-founder, which lasted six or seven years pre-pandemic. Um, and we worked in the same school districts, 66 school districts in upstate New York. Um, we saw roughly 77,000 students a year, and we continue to do that. Um, and Bridge Arts Ensemble ended uh, at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, it became too expensive for the donors at the time. Uh, and so they, you know, the board then decided, hey, let's let's end this. Um, and then they gave me the blessing to start the new company. It's the same, it's the same, um, it's a, it's a similar but expanded mission and vision. So we provide concerts and workshops, interactive concerts and workshops for grades K through 12. Um, but we also, uh, are partnering with other arts education organizations to provide mentorship for high school students who either want to have a career in the arts or are interested in preparing for entrance exams at conservatories or arts education wow. programs. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it is it is the 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 love of my life. Um, Living Arts Collaborative. It's important. It also gives, uh, it's important to, to young people to have 
that type of outreach in which they can make connections from arts programs to their lives. It's what helps them find meaning and helps them find direction and make sense of this, this whole thing. Um, but it also provides, we also provide work to 40 New York City artists and teaching artists. And when you say work, yep. do you mean salaries, annual salaries, they, where they, they have a substantial income to live some in a city of, like New York City? Yes. Well, some of them, a few of them are, are, are uh, employees. Most of them are contracted artists, but they are paid uh, a Broadway stipend. What? So we have had artists, yes, we, they're paid very well. They're in upstate New York, anywhere from three to five days, six days if you count the travel day. Um, uh, and they're, they come home with the same weekly stipend as they would the Broadway show, chorus Broadway show. So they're paid very well. We've had artists who sing at the Metropolitan Opera, who play in the orchestra at the Metropolitan Opera, and who sing and perform in Broadway, um, who have taken time off to do, or taken a week off or so to do our outings, because they also believe in art education for young people. Yes. Um, and then they would go back because they won't lose any money. Right. They won't lose any money. Um, yeah. Uh, Steve, this, the, is, uh, this is just so heartwarming because it really is essentially yeah. passing the baton the same way that it, these amazing yes. artists w that you, yes. you saw in your church, yes. that it was the, the yes. possibility was there yeah. because you yes. saw it. Yeah. Representation it matters. It really does. It matters so much. And it's a full circle moment in many ways. It is the church. It is also the Duke Ellington School of the Arts in which I saw educators who were performing artists working in the schools, teaching young people the craft of yeah. whether it was music, whether it was theater, whether it was dance, um, whether it was literature. They were teaching us how to do what they were doing. Yes. Uh, and so this is this is this is exactly the same thing except we're we're not a school. They don't come to us, we go to them. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. but I think as as artists we have to have that component. I I always say every artist needs to have the component in which they go to teach or mentor or should I say teach and mentor. Yes. Um a young person. It it for I would say for many reasons. For one, young people need that. I needed it. My friends needed it. And we all benefited from it. Um, but I told you, I always tell you, I, I went to school with Lamont Rucker. I went to school with um, so many people who are performing today. Right. David Chappelle. We were all there together. And they always talk about the craft that they learned at the Duke Ellington School of the Arts. And every opportunity I get, I say that was the beginning. Right. That was the beginning. Um, but I also, in addition to that, I think every <laughs> singer um, and musician should, uh, or should I say instrumentalists, because we're all musicians, That's right. should have the opportunity to perform before uh, <laughs> an elementary school student, <laughs> because you learn to be real very quickly. Because elementary school students would tell you if it's not working, <laughs> <laughs> you learn. It's we we. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. I remember when I started years ago, about ten years ago, uh, with Lincoln Center. Um, it was then Lincoln Center Institute, uh, and then became now it's Lincoln Center Education. But I started working there uh, as a as a work of art for them, and working in the schools, which is where. This whole thing, I was like, oh my gosh, uh, this is like coming home. Yeah. It was like coming home. But I learned very quickly, <laughs> yeah, you have to be as authentic for them, the young people, as you are on the stage. Because they will sit and just, you know, ignore you if, you're, if you don't bring it. You it bring really it. is. It, it, you know? it, it really is a rite of passage. As an artist, yes, it is to be a right able to perform yes. for young young kids, I mean, it's yes. it's not just for yeah. their benefit, but for you as the artist, because as you said, exactly. they are the harshest critics. You can't just pull anything. They are the over harshest their eyes. critics. 
but we learn. We learn so much. And 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 what we learn from performing in front of these young people, we then take. I will say, I have taken everything I've learned, every mode of engagement that I've learned from performing for young people, I've taken to the operatic concert, whatever stage I'm on. This, it's the same tools. It's the yeah. same tools. It's just, you know, when you adjust it for an adult, but it's the same tools of engagement. You have to engage mm -hmm. everyone who's before you. And I'm so glad Juilliard, uh, I mean, it started with President Polizzi because he believed in this whole artist at citizen um, method of, of being, way of being. But now with the new president, he's taken it to a, a new level. And I'm, I'm really happy about that. I've gone back and done a few things for them um, in terms of just you know, helping the, the artists that want to be, the young artists that want to be teaching artists at Juilliard. Um, it's so important. It's, it's, I'm so it's, glad it's that they're, they're doing that. Yeah, it has to. It, it can't, yeah, yeah. We just can't be, Juilliard cannot be an ivory tower. And I, I got that saying right. from an alum who graduated from Juilliard in the 1930s. And he basically said that yeah. we were in a meeting and, um, and he said Juilliard yes. is an ivory tower. And it just rubbed me in such a harsh way because it's not an ivory tower. Mm -hmm. It's part of community and it's and not part an ivory of tower. outreach and it part is. of, you know, inclusion yes. and, and diversity, but not just cultural yes. and racial. We're talking socioeconomic right. because, you know, it's yes. not this elitist kind of art form. It's it's for everybody. It's not. Yeah. It's it's for everybody. It has and when to you be. listen to artists. Yes, it has to be. It has to be. I um I will never forget listening to uh, interviews, whether it's Renee Fleming um, or Leontine Price, who talks about all that she learned at Juilliard. Then, of course, it was it was uptown, but it was it was still Juilliard, and all that she learned there in terms of being an artist, mm -hmm. in terms of being an artist who loves an audience, who wants to give back to an audience. Mm -hmm. She learned that at Juilliard. So I think it's mm -hmm. always been that. But now they have they have they have refined that model in a way that it's 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 beautiful. It's beautiful and it's uh it's useful. They, so useful. They've become more intentional. They've become more intentional yes. with the models. Yes. That's yes. they yes. they design something right. that is really for the community, about the community. Let's take the arts into into regular yes. folks' homes and lives because art right. really is live. It really, really does. Yes. I, I have I have this amazing yes. story that comes to mind. Um, my son, when I taught at Juilliard. Back in the day when you were there, mm -hmm. my son was right. five, six. He's now thirty-four. Tells how well, how long it's been, but yeah, oh he's my thirty-four. Gosh. <laughs> wow, he was five or six, and I took him to his first dance performance. The Juilliard <sighs> Dance Division had their spring concert, and he's five, and he's there right. in his little navy blue blazer and <laughs> sitting anxiously. The curtain <laughs> comes up. And the dancers yes. come on stage and he's sitting <laughs> on the edge of this chair. And 10 minutes in, loudly, he says, in his very New York accent, because he's very New York then. Right, of he course. Goes, of course. When are they going to talk? <laughs> <laughs> everybody around him heard. He goes, when are they going to talk? <laughs> and I said, sweetheart. <laughs> They are, they are talking, but they're doing it with their bodies. They're, there's, he goes, oh, okay. And so he's listening. He goes, oh, oh, oh. He's listening and watching and seeing what the story is about. He goes, oh, I get it. Right. He loves her, but she doesn't love him. And I said, oh, yeah, but, but look at the lighting, too. It's the lights will tell you yes, what's going yes. on as well. Yes, That's, exactly. You know, everybody around him in our you know, the people in front, the people behind us and the people beside us, we all became yeah. a community for this little yes. black boy to yes. understand yes. the world of dance. And yes. it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. and community, that little village that was around that little boy 
helped him to understand what storytelling is. Storytelling, you right. don't have to have language. Right. Storytelling can be in the body. You know, storytelling yes. is in an instrument. Story, it's storytelling. Right. It's and, storytelling. And that's what we want to spread into community. You know, so yeah. but we're not stuck in an ivory tower and this elite yeah. kind of art form is there and right. has to be, you know, attained by just like chopping at the bit. No, it's for right. everybody. Right. Welcome. Right. Um, join us. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I um you we we've spoken about this before. So when I was at Catholic University, just to go back for a second, um yes. I had the opportunity to work with Todd Duncan. Uh, who was the oh. original Porgy and Porgy and Bess. Yes. He also created, yes, he also created the role of Stephen Kamalo in, uh, it's escaping me, the, the show. Um, da -da 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 -da, cry, the beloved, it'll come to me. Oh. Um, but he, he was a giant. You, you probably know the show. I do. It's coming to me. But anyway, good, yes. Yes, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, there were two things he said. He he always said, first of all, the sounds of your throat will never make you a great singer. It's what you do below that counts. He always said that. He always said that. <laughs> <laughs> Which I get now. I get it. Get but it. at the time I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but I get it. Um, but then he always, in addition, he said almost every lesson, I we would, take the first part of the lesson to warm up. You know, we'd go through the exercises, all the, the technical stuff. And then the second part of the lesson, we'd sing. So I, <laughs> I'd start singing, and he'd tap on the piano. Son, son, no, we've already done the technical stuff. Now, you have to be a great poet. Mm. He said, singers must be great poets. Mm. So that ties into kind of what you, you were saying too. We, we have to communicate. Yeah. We have to communicate these ideas. Yes. And sometimes it's just to an audience. Other times it's, it's to the entire community that we're bringing in, in like our education programming yes. and stuff. But we have to communicate these ideas. Right. And I you know? say, I, I often say to my clients and my students, the story is the star. We're there yes. to facilitate the story. Yes, and clearly we right. put our funk on it. You know, yes, we're going yes, to yes, interpret yes. the story differently than the people who've told it before us and who will right. tell it after us. But the story right. is the star. We're there to facilitate yeah. it. And storytelling yep. is so crucial. And, and, yes. and, and, and it's necessary for kids to understand that their yes. stories matter. You know, it, that's it's, right. It, thank that's you. right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. being such a proponent of of passing the torch on to the future generations of artists. It's just thank it, you. It thank feels you. like it's your calling. You know, it really, really yes. does. Yeah. So if yeah. we want to know more because about also... about the collaborative. If we wanted to know more about the collaborative, how yes. where can we go? Where what what's your website? People who want to donate is is um, what 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 do we do? So the collab the Living Arts Collaborative the the website is livingartscollaborative.com livingartscollaborative.com you can go there you can learn about us learn about what we do you can also follow us on Instagram Facebook uh twitter <laughs> um uh yes and linkedin <laughs> we're on all the platforms um and and you can also donate um through those through those platforms we were fiscally sponsored for uh almost a year almost a year we were fiscally which means um, when you're fiscally sponsored, you are under the umbrella of another nonprofit, mm -hmm. which means people can donate, but it goes through the umbrella nonprofit and then to you mm -hmm. until you get your 501c3 or tax exempt status. That's what that means from the from the IRS. So we have our tax exempt status. We've had it um, for a few months now, which means that we can accept donations directly and uh and uh it opens the world to a whole uh it opens 
to a whole new way of engaging with artists um, and grants and all of that. So please follow us. Please uh, look us up um, on our website. Uh, I think you really like what we have to offer. Oh my gosh, it sounds phenomenal. It absolutely does. Yeah. Um, we're winding down a bit. Um, uh, but before we go to my final thoughts and my final question, are there any plans of expanding it nationwide or at least outside the state of New York? What, what at the moment, at the moment there, there aren't any, um, at the moment, uh, we really want to take advantage of New York state and, uh, and, and, and we work through. BOZES, which is the Board of Cooperative Education that works with many school districts throughout the state of New York. Um, they also help with funding mm. and programming. So we work with them, mm. which is why it's great to do it in New York first. Absolutely. Um, and our mission is, at the moment, New York specific. But yes, I can see in a few years where we begin to expand to New Jersey or Connecticut Absolutely. and maybe even, you know, for the regions, yes. Yeah, yeah. It, it just sounds like a model that works. Yes. And so someone yes. would might want yes. to come in and replicate it for, yes. you know, the, 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 the schools in Chicago. I mean, I know Chicago's a city and Illinois is the state. No, but that's right. You know, I know it's state funded. But, you know, when yes. you think of inner city um, communities that could really yes. use some Inter arts connection. Um, exactly. You, you, there. It's we're stri- we're starving for it. Essentially, they're starving for yeah. it. And inner and 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 an inner arts connection that connects to their lived experiences. Yes. You have to connect yes. the arts to something that a, a young person or that anybody, but in yes. this particular case, that a young person understands that yeah. connects to their lived experiences where they say, Oh, so that means this and dots. that means that they connect the dots. You have they, to do that. Connect. Or else it becomes a museum piece. That's and right. we're past that. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We're past that. My final my final question is and and think about it for a moment, because it's not really that mm. that kind of stock question. I really want you to yeah. think about it. Is is there something that you would tell your younger self, Stephen, knowing now what you know? Oh, yeah. What would you tell your younger self? I, I, I know that right off the bat. I don't, I don't have Good. to think about it. That's something I've, I would tell my younger self to trust the process. Trust the process. Um, life... And I, I, I have believed this for a long time, um, and I've seen it to be true. If we trust the process, if yeah. we trust the experiences, and, and remember those experiences and how the dots connected for so many of us to get from point A to point B to point C, it really works. It works out. Mm. It works out. Trust mm. the process. Life continues to move forward. Mm. It sometimes does that, and uh, but it's move. It's always moving forward. Mm. And if we know that here, then it begins to work here. Yeah. Mm. Trust the process. Mm. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you so Thank you. much. And can I tell you how much I love you and how how happy I am that you're doing this? It's so wonderful to reconnect. I mean, you were <laughs> such a joy in the halls of Juilliard. So. Thank you. It's so good to see you again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. I'm so glad. It such was a joy. Such, it, it was it was really wonderful to go back to Juilliard. I'm getting emotional because yeah. there yeah. were so many students, students that I didn't even teach that are still friends to this day, mm-hmm. the dancers, the actors, yeah. Uh, yeah. the actors clearly yeah. because I taught all of them, but the musicians, yeah. um, you know, the singers. Yes. You know, I, yep. there, there are singers, this little boy, my son, who I, I talked about, I didn't have a nanny. I had nannies. 
Manny's mm-hmm. yes. uh, opera singers who were my yeah. babysitters. And they would say, yeah. Denise, don't call me a babysitter because <laughs> he's not a baby and we don't sit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but but Julia, the Juilliard community helped raise my child, helped yes. me become a yes. woman. And, yes. and it was, it was, it was really you guys. It was the student. Oh. So I thank you. Thank you. I thank you. Mm. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. To be thank continued. You. Will you come back? Yes. You come back? Yes. Okay. I would love to. Absolutely. Thank you. Whenever you want. Whenever you thank want. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. We'll be in touch. Bye, baby. Bye, sweetheart. Yes. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. I hope you've learned something. I hope you feel enlightened. I hope you feel lighter than you did before you entered. Subscribe and leave us a review. Tell us what you liked. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Tell us who you'd want to see. This is Denise Wood saying, see you next time.